Hello Internet, this is Sal Good Sam, and here's another doodling video. So I thought I'd experiment with this video with talking about a subject while you watch me do stuff. Initially here in the video you're seeing me do some warm-ups, uh, I'm doing pattern exercises, something I encourage people to do just to keep your uh, motor control sharp. And when you're first learning to do a lot of it, to refine your fine motor control, uh, you can do hatching and fi fine pattern work as part of drawings as well, but separating it out like this helps focus on the mechanical task of just what you're doing without having to think about whether or not the drawing of the thing you're drawing came out okay. It's, it's basically simplifying the process of learning by focusing on one task. Um, I recommend doing that whenever you can. So I thought I would talk a bit while you watch me ink these nursing comics about dealing with uh, Anxiety, basically, different forms of anxiety as a professional artist. Uh, the work you're seeing me ink in this video is a, a series of 15 uh, co informational comics that are being made for nursing stations in Quebec, uh, for people, for, for nurses specializing in dealing with uh, patients that have uh, cognitive uh, senility, basically. They're, they're losing their cognitive functions. Interesting project. Uh, I'm very excited about it in terms of it's a, a well-paying project, so doing this is going to buy me a bit of time. Um, uh, I'll be able to use the money I make from this to uh, take some time off teaching and focus on some personal work, get uh, Dracula wrapped up, and hopefully then start Dream Life. Um, not much left to do on Dracula, just 15 pages, but there have been a lot of interruptions and, and issues with working rhythm been very slow going on that and then I pained me to have to put it aside for a while so that I could do this freelance gig and another a freelance illustration job I got that came at the same time um, I, I, I definitely need more freelance work more freelance work and or more patrons on patreon <laughs> one or the other one way or another I need more income uh, in order to well just sustain myself it's been very lean the last few years but also uh, in general, to try to do my own work, either you know, Patreon would be great if it if it paid enough, because then in theory I would just be doing my own work. But freelancing contracts is how in the past I've survived, and uh, if I were able to get a, a more regular, steady diet of that. One thing that happened recently was uh, I was contacted by uh, an agent I've tried to hook up with a few times. They haven't signed me on as a regular artist, but they they were hooked me up with the job, and there's probably more uh, contracts from them. I'm hoping that all relationship will evolve into something more regular. I've always felt like if I had a, a an agent, it would help an awful lot, but it's hard to find one. Um, so there was a lot of uh, anxiety I had about having to put Dracula aside in order to do this work, even though it made sense. It was smart in terms of my finances because um, I was so close to being done, but you are, you know, delaying once more. Um, I'm sure the patrons on the Kickstarter for Dracula would love to see me that just get wrapped up. It's uh, way overdue, but uh, it is close, and I just had to bite the bullet and do this because it it would have been stupid to to not uh, pick up the contract and leave that much money on the table. Um, but that's a classic kind of anxiety that, you know, freelancers, first of all, learning both uh, to how to deal with stress when you're not getting work, the anxiety, uh, especially if it's your central f form of income, which in, for large, for basically two decades, it was it's the way I've made a living with a few exceptions. And recently I've been teaching part time. Um, and then there's the the juggling of when to say no to freelance work. Learning, to, it's actually important sometimes to say no. I've, I've talked about this in the past in, in podcasts, so if you look at my videos, you'll you'll probably find me talking about it somewhere. Um, but it's also, you know, it's a it's the it's not easy dealing with uh, wrestling about when to say yes, when to say no, what to do when, making the right choices. You can get into uh, a, an incredibly strategic frame of mind thinking about planning. Uh, a career path and to a certain point that's important but it can get to be too much it can turn into an obsession and screw with your head and the you know the main thing that i'm thinking about is like you're just emotional and mental stability and ability to uh your sustainability of of working so it's kind of important to 
have a what I've always called a, a healthy fuck it clause. <laughs> At a certain point, you have to make the decision, and you're, it's not like you're going to stop worrying about the outcomes and which is the right choice. But you you you, you balance, you weigh the odds, and you weigh the values of different different paths, and then you have to make a choice. And uh, when you screw up, you just got to be ready to, to to accept that and learn from it. But you always have to ultimately just choose something. Um, and, you know, there is no easy answer to, or easy solution to the anxiety that will inevitably induce. Uh, other than sort of breathe, and you kind of have to learn to trust yourself. Uh, even if it means learning to trust that you can handle a disappointment or things not going as planned or you know whatever happens whatever happens you have to be prepared to deal with it and that's a form of trust as well not just trusting that you can do things but trusting when to take a chance on yourself and trusting that if things don't work out that you can count on yourself to keep it together and, and accepting uh that things that go bad it's also part of like the knowing when to quit idea it's great to have a um, a lot of grit and commit to things and and really work at them for a long time but it's also really important to know when to throw in the towel. <laughs> um, I wonder about that a lot. I, I'm currently uh, in my 40s, getting to my late 40s, mid to late 40s. And uh, there are paths ahead of me in life. Some things that feel like I've chosen already just by virtue of how I've lived my life so far. And some things that are still up in the air about whether I want to do and take and partake in. And one of the anxieties and issues that I'm wrestling with is, you know, how much am I willing to sacrifice my art and, and my career as a freelancer to do something that would require more regularity and more dependability and less stress. And even just in the end, the ability to focus, um, doing freelance work and being an artist and doing storytelling and comics and teaching all of these things. It's a high cognitive load and adding something else large uh, and life changing to the plate is, is a valid concern for anybody considering it. Uh, doesn't matter what that is. If it's a, a big move, uh, a huge change in relationship status or expanding your family or any kind of big life change, they can have, pretty profound effects on your ability to be focused and productive and learning how to manage that, learning how to manage stress. Stress is inevitable. Some of it's good. Helps you get things done. Motivates you to get off your ass, hopefully. Um, at least it should. And uh, But too much is too much and it can wear you down. So this has all been on my thought a lot. It's it's February. It's, it's the middle of winter. <laughs> and uh, so of course one's thoughts drift to the dark. Um, I'm actually feeling pretty positive about work. The thinking is going well, if not a little slow. Too many distractions. I was going to try to get a page and a half done today when I ink this panel, uh, but uh, some emails came up. I had to talk to some students, and things got distracted. And here I am inking late in the night, uh, and then recording a voiceover for a podcast to go with the video. Well, I think that's about enough time. I'm going to end this here. I'm going to try to do this more often. I got a new audio recorder, an H1N, uh, so that I can do the audio for videos or voiceovers like this at a higher quality. And I got a new camera that's a lot sharper for doing the, the overtop desk work. So hopefully there'll be more of these videos. If you want to help me keep this thing going or get my comics done, well, really, that's the main thing I would hope you'd help me do, get my comics done. Uh, go over to patreon.com slash salgood and consider pledging. Uh, you can just pledge for a couple of bucks and become a subscriber to all my comics, or you can pledge for more for other reward tiers, including uh, potentially being a student, which basically means that uh, you can take advantage of any instructional material I upload and send me your work for critique. That's the, the big main perk for student patrons, is that you're... you're get my feedback. I can arrange with uh, video chats or talk and email or if you happen to be in Montreal, meet in person. I do that. Uh, I have one patron, student patron who never really takes advantage of online access to me, but 
whenever she's in town, she doesn't live in Montreal, but whenever she's visiting, which is regularly, uh, as a retired professional, uh, and she has a, a pad de terre here, and she'll always book an appointment with me when she's in town to check out the progress in her work and talk about stuff. It's as a, as a teacher, I find that one of the things I end up doing an awful lot is consulting on exactly the kind of things I'm talking about in this video. Uh, on people's securities and focus and and confidence about things and whether something's a good idea or the right thing to do. There's a fair bit of almost counseling work involved in teaching art in some ways, because art's such a, uh, a nerve-wracking thing for so many people. So that's one of the biggest issues is just getting in your own way. So with that, gonna uh, yeah, go check out Patreon. Give me a pledge if you like what I'm doing, like the videos, subscribe, the usual spiel, and I will talk to you again next time, YouTube.